Hello, and welcome to the Night Girls. This is episode 648. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Tuesday, the 2nd of April. Excuse me, yes, April 2024. Laura and I both use the she, her pronouns, and um, we both have finished. Well, I finished nope. some stuff. Laura's very close to finishing. So close. A big thing. But, um... Not quite. Oh That's well. okay. It's fine. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Um, I'm in the middle of a round. Okay, so I am too. first is not important. So, okay. Alright. <laughs> uh, so, what I'm working on right now, I've been working on off and on for a while. These are the, um, a pair of socks out of some, um... Is it Willems and Nodge? No, it's nope. Geektastic fibers. I couldn't remember for a minute. Like in the Dolly Parton colorway. In color the way. Dolly, it's just Dolly. Okay. Colorway. Um, I assume it means Dolly Parton, but uh, and this was her show colorway for SSK 2023. Um, this is the second sock I've cast on and finished the ribbing. It's not going to be an absolutely perfect match to the first one, so I've got a little bit of an offset here, but I didn't want to waste a whole repeat just to make it match exactly so it'll be fine I'll just make this cuff just a tiny bit shorter so that it'll match after that um, but yeah so I finished the first sock uh, earlier this week and cool. cast on Laura and I got caught up on Drag Race yeah Drag Race we watched the first season or the first episode of the new season of Taskmaster which I'm still like it's new people so you have to get to know the new people yeah um, but I'm very glad it's back. It's a show that I think they could do forever, and it still would be funny. Um, but yeah, so I'm knitting. These are 72 stitches on a size 2.25 millimeter US 1 needle. And then the other thing that I'm working on and picked back up <laughs> is in a bag that is too small for it. Aww. I moved it from another bag to this bag, thinking this bag was bigger. It's the exact same size. Still the large wedge. <laughs> yeah. Like, Amy Beth makes three bag sizes. And this is, I think, the smallest one. No, it's, she makes a sock size. She makes four. So, sock, large wedge, sweater, Aaron. Okay. Well, this is the second from the smallest. So, not the smallest, but the next one. Yeah, it's meant for, like, two skein shawls. Oh, it's the 2016 SSK. Yeah. Bag. Um... So I picked back up Pressed Flowers, which is an Amy Christopher's pattern, um, and it's all slip stitch. You're only ever using one color at a time. Uh, I'm using Barocco Remix uh, fingering weight, and then this is a Noro uh, ooh, Yukata. Um, all this information is in our show notes. Our show notes are on our website, which is the Knit Girls Three Ls dot com. So I finished, this is a slightly cropped sweater, which I see them and I try them on and I'm like, ooh, yes, I want to try that. And then I knit them and I'm like, ooh, I don't know, you know, like. I, I think it's what you pair it with. Lifelong fat person, like always make it longer so you can pull it down. Like it's just instinctual, right? So. Um, I love a cropped sweater with like a dress that flares. Yeah, it's all about what lines you're making and how it, you like that it feels and like. There, you don't have to wear things that like flatter. You. Yeah. You wear things that you want to wear that make and you are comfortable. Happy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So I finished the right front, and now I'm working on the back. Good girl, Buffy. And then I'll come back and do the left front. Um, and then there will be the sleeves and the collar. So I still, I'm a little over halfway, I would think, at this point. Um, this is very good, like, mindless TV watching. I've been watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy, which is dumb. Like, I've watched, I think I want to say, like, the first seven or eight seasons a long time ago. There's over 20 seasons. They're starting the 20th season. Yeah. Um, I'm only up to, like, season four. But, like, I have a hard time making decisions about what to watch, so this is a good thing that'll, like, get me through a couple of months. Yeah. You could rewatch ER, too. Or Bones. I really like ER. I really like Bones, I too. I like Emily Deschanel and um, David Boreans, but I don't know. ER I really liked. Um, but, yeah. For the first couple of seasons, for sure. Until Dude Got Brain Cancer. I know, right? 
Uh, but yeah, so I, I really am enjoying working with this. I do occasionally find that I cannot count and have screwed up a motif and have to go back a row, but that is entirely my fault, not the patterns. So um, yeah, I'm, the, the yarns are so nice on the hand. They're very like sweatshirty and that makes me happy. So I'm going to cram this back in the bag that is too small for it. <laughs> um, have you picked up your direction stuff at all? Uh, so funny you ask. I was excited to mark that as finished this week because I did um, pick up, I want to say it was Sunday evening, I did pick it up and pull out the collar because the, the reason that, that it wasn't finished was the collar was too tight so I couldn't try it on to see if it fit because it wouldn't go over my head, right? Um, and it might have been I really struggled, but I didn't want to. So I pulled out the collar. Uh, realized I have no idea where I left the skein of yarn. Um, it's not with the project or with where the other skein is, so no idea where I put it. Oh no! It might be in my suitcase because I haven't unpacked it yet. Um, oh yeah. Because I was at Laura's. Yeah, place when that's I probably it. true. Um, but anyway, or in the back out. of your car. But I had a swatch, uh, swatch. So I just pulled the swatch. Okay. Out, um, and it took me two or three times to get it where it was loose enough, but not too loose. Um, but I did get the collar fixed, so I tried it on and then realized the hem was too tight. Oh. <laughs> so, but that's much simpler because I don't have to pick up stitches. They're already loose. Like, yeah, like, you just have to take out two right. rows and bind it off. Yeah, so off, essentially. That it's dragging again another week. Hopefully I'll be done <laughs> next week and I can talk about it. But, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not done yet. It's closer, but it's not done yet. So, how's your um, gorgeous, lovely sweater? It's going pretty well. I have finished the first leaf. Ta-da! And I am almost done Down. on the second. I have three more repeats to go. go down a little bit. There we go. And then um, the ribbing to do, and then it will be done. It's really, really pretty. Thank you. So, I might get a... It is taking me around 35 minutes to do a repeat now. So... I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there for sure. You'll definitely have this done next week. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping to get it done maybe tonight. We'll see. Uh, I have an audiobook that I'm listening to that I'm enjoying, and it is like 20-some hours long. Mm -hmm. So it's giving me a lot of uh, knitting time. Yeah. And then I need to ply my Mystic Square mashup spin. And that will probably be what I do next. And instead of just doing a traditional gauge swatch, just because the first panel is a square and it's just 18 inches, I'm just going to cast it on and see what happens. Um, I mean, you'll block it and you'll go make from your there. usual assumptions that you have to go yeah, down, X down a needle of size, size yeah. or two. Um, but. Yeah, it needs to be 18 inches wide, so I might get, like, a couple inches in and see what's going on. But um, because it is modular, I can always add yeah. on um, on one of the, on the panels equally. I also want to look more at Amy Best Notes, because she did it, and she added bus starts. So I'm curious as to where she did that. Mm -hmm. Um she is a very good person to, to pick their brain. Yes. Um, she and Malia both are oh, excellent. Yeah. And they both knit it. So I will be some brain picking going on. And then that hopefully will be a fairly quick knit because it is a worsted weight. And then after that, I want to cast on my DK weight sweater out of Cotton Comfort. What DK weight sweater? It is a Vera Valamaki sweater. It's the one that Christine's actually knitting right oh, now. Oh, okay, cool. Um... So, more details on that to come. I will have to swatch for that. I made myself a list of, like, seven sweaters that I would love to get done before SSK. I'm not going to get seven sweaters no. done by SSK. But if you get a couple done. Yeah, like... but, like, that is my kind of, like, summer sweater list. Um, one of them's not really summer. It's more fall, but it's a cropped, so we'll see. Um, Do you have any other things you're working on? Uh, I have a pair of socks. So these are the lollipop yarn socks that I showed last time. 
and I got some ripping done on them. It's just a smidge. So like one stripe and Ooh. some ribbing. Yeah, I knit on them a little bit when we were in the car on the way to and from Ikea. So not a ton of work done on them, but slowly getting there. Um, I did not bring anything else, like finished or spinning. I do have some spinning that I've been working on. I've been plying my spindle spinning, which was six ounces of the Knit Spin Farm Advent, but it's in process because spinning off of 24 or 25 spindles is a process. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did not bring that with me, but hopefully that will also be done, plus some other spinning next week. So hopefully there'll be lots of new things next week. I feel like this has been everything that I've worked on in March, which is pretty accurate. It's not um, a bad thing. I mean, it's all, well, it's not all hand spun, but no. like it is a really... It's a significant amount of hand spun. And it's significant time investment. Like the, the um, structure at the yoke is not as um, like brainless yeah. as some other ones that you've done. So it required you to pay attention, which is boo. <laughs> um, I don't like paying attention to things. <laughs> I just like doing what I know. Um, but yeah, and some of the other knitting this year is definitely going to cause me to pay attention. Yeah. But this is my fourth project out of hand spun so far this year. I did that very cute baby hat, which I want to knit again. And then um, the two scarves, the Tiff Nealon mm -hmm. scarves, and then this. So all together, that's like... And it's only just April. Yeah, and it's over a pound of hand spun out of the stash. Um, 22 ounces or so. So that's not terrible. That's great. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I have some other things that I, I like I'm spinning for a recalibrate right now too so all this hand spun or partially hand spun sweaters this year that is the plan we'll see what happens and you I never know actually had Laura buy me some fiber oh yeah you did for the first time in in a long a time long, long time the nuns had some um, <laughs> Nun fluff. Lens up. Yes. And Nuns are ingle nook fibers. Yes. Um, and I've never spun any other stuff, so. Oh, I should give you another, just one of their dyed braids to spin. Um, They're should. super fun. You should give me, like, a big uh, nine ounce. Let's not go crazy now. <laughs> Mix of... Uh, like a gradient set? Is yeah, that what you're trying to do? Yeah. yeah. Let's not go crazy. Um, I am just dropping stitches left and right tonight. Mm. I could not count to two the other day when we were I was at Laura's to do ribbing. I kept screwing that up. So, um, oh God. splitting stitches. Oh no. I need to like this is just a sock. <laughs> it's just a sock. Sometimes socks can be hard. Uh, anyway. Sometimes just existing can be I hard. Mean, that is a fact. So I finished two things um, the past week, one of which is a sewing thing. Yes. And it was for Laura for her birthday. Laura turned 43. I did. On Saturday. All my kids who told me I turned 23 got extra credit points. <laughs> Not really. They might have gotten candy, though. Um... So Laura wanted a duster. I did. It's... Two years ago, I wanted a duster. <laughs> no, it was last year. It was last year. Two birthdays ago. No, it wasn't. Because well, I don't think it's been out that long. It's 43 is a birthday and 42 is a birthday. Like, so that, no. It's a year ago, yes. two birthdays. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I started it a year ago. Yeah. And then it sat for almost a year with nothing because that's how much she loves me um yeah you're right that is it um but i did i finished it it was um a lot of little pieces uh <laughs> as sewing is uh yeah a lot of handwork at the end to tack down the very long collar um so i learned how to do that um but it fits 
I think it fits great. I love it. Um, it flares. Yep. So she can twirl and it flares. I do like a twirl. I'll put some pictures in here. Let, okay, so these pictures were before I mowed my lawn. Okay, don't judge and yours. Grass. <laughs> I'm wearing slippers. <laughs> and Leslie made me twirl. <laughs> I did. I just made her go outside and twirl. And then with an iPhone, at least, you can, like, hold down and, and left your your camera button and it'll just take like a burst and it'll keep taking pictures until you push stop. It'll take like 30 pictures a second or something. Yep. So I went through and picked like the best 10 or whatever and kept them. But um, yeah, I think it, it turned out really great. I put like a pop of color inside the cup so if she folded it up, there'd be something fun there. Yeah. Um, it has big pockets. I do love big pockets. It does not have belt loops on it for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, but I added those so that, uh, if she wanted to wear it open, like, the belt loops could dangle and, and it wouldn't fall off. I'm not sure why it doesn't have loops built into it, but anyway. I just created some and, and tacked them on. Um, but yeah, so that's done, um, which is good. And I finished my stained, uh, not stained glass, that's what Sue said, it was stained glass. Um my painting bricks. painting bricks shawl by Stephen West. So It's so pretty. I did run out of yarn. This very last section here should have four rows of green, but it only has three. But you would have never noticed it if I hadn't told you. So yeah. um, I got to the end of it and I only had like two yards left and I was like, well, all right, well, I'm just going to switch to the next, to the border. Um, it's huge. I it, love it. It's really pretty. I probably will never wear it, so I'll probably put it in the SSK raffle. Um, because it is, you know, it's got a lot of appeal with all the colors, and it's it's large. It's substantial. Yeah, so. I love a large shawl. Um, so this will probably go in the SSK raffle. Um, which is something that we do at SSK, which is our summer event in Nashville. The event center where we hold it is a nonprofit that puts... Um, a lot of money and time back into the community to help people who need it so um, we always do a little fundraiser for them when we're there um that's basically all i've worked on i am reading the third edge series book by alona andrews mm -hmm. it's not my favorite one it's the one with calder yeah the one where they steal stuff um but the boys are in it, the the two. George and Jack? Yep. Who you see later in the Innkeeper series. Yes, and all Gaston yep. is also in it. Um, so you get to see them as they're developing, which is cool. Um, and I'm re-listening to Project Hail Mary by Andy Ware, who's the same guy who wrote... Um, Martian. The Martian, thank you. I was like, the book where he grows potatoes on Mars, what is it? <laughs> Um, the Martian. <laughs> that is a summary. <laughs> they should use that as the blurb. <laughs> the Knit Girls, episode 648, where they grow potatoes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, it's very science-y, like, if you're a science person, it's science fiction, but... It's dystopian science fiction. Uh... I mean, most of it takes place in space, so... But they're trying to save the... That original yeah, thing was right. it to is. save the world. It's not... I was thinking more post-apocalyptic. But you're right, it is dystopian. Um, and it's very interesting, but it is a lot of... Science. Like, the dude's constantly talking about how he's calculating mass and density and speed. Yeah, and it like, lost me in the second chapter, yeah. and it never recovered me. Because I'm usually doing something else when I'm listening to an audiobook, like I'm usually playing a game on my phone, or outside with the dogs, or whatever. It's, you know, it's fine. I can zone out for a minute while we're talking science. I, I don't have to worry about retaining any of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> heaven forbid I retain any science. <laughs> uh, Michael's around for, for our dystopian future. But I do like the uh, um, alien life that he encounters, so I, I look forward to, to the interaction there. I think this is the second or third time I've listened to it. What about you? I moved on to the second Becca Cooper book by Tamora Pierce. It is called Bloodhound. 
I'm enjoying it to the point where I'm thinking about rereading all the Tamora Pierces in chronological order because um, these are like the first books in the chronological order not in the written order mm -hmm. they're some of the last in the written order so that might happen um, I don't like the audiobooks of some of her later ones because they are multiple readers yeah I have a hard time with that um, so those ones I'll just pick up and read but yeah enjoying it's like revisiting my childhood mm -hmm. even though these ones were out a while ago like 2006 so I was teaching at that point um, but yeah just enjoying them they are nice long books and I had forgotten a lot of what happened to them so it's not super redundant yeah um, I was actually reading a Mercedes Lackey book at the same time as these, and I was getting the two confused in my head. Because <laughs> magical cats in both. I mean, come on now. Oh, speaking of magical cats, so I did listen to Starter Villain, which is a John Scalzi book this past week, uh -huh. which was recommended by Suze, um, although I do like John Scalzi, so it was on my list already. Um, and I... I won't spoil it for anyone because it is still a relatively new book. Um, but there are intelligent cats in it. I'm, I'm down for intelligent cats. There are also other intelligent animals. Some mm. of them are aquatic with a lot of attitude. Um, and they're the best part of the book. Unfortunately, they're only about 10% of the book. Oh, no. So, um, I, I like John Scalzi, but sometimes... He gets too, he like, his military books are too military for me. His, like, this one is too, like, business intrigue for me. Mm. Um, but I do like the little asides. I do like sassy animals. Yeah, I mean, these are uh, very sweary. Nice. And they want to unionize for labor rights. <laughs> yes! So. <laughs> uh, mine has sassy animals, like pigeons and cats, but they do not want to unionize, unfortunately. <laughs> One of them is a constellation brought to Earth, which is an interesting hmm. little twist. Um, but yeah, that is what I'm reading. I have not been doing a lot of watching of things besides what we watch together, which is Drag Race and Taskmaster. Um, just because I've been listening to stuff. And reading and playing a lot of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Um, and also uh, a bunch of other just nonsensical Switch games. So Kobe and I have been playing ones. a nonsensical Switch game. What's it called? It's, I don't know, Mario vs. Donkey Kong or something. Yeah. So it's got a two-player mode. So you have to, it's like a puzzle, sort of. You have to get this from there and go oh, here gotcha. and watch like this. And, um, that seems right up your alley. Kobe didn't want to initially play it because it was like, this is like a baby game. And we are constantly getting our asses handed to us. Like, just <laughs> constantly game over. Uh, 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 uh. Um, but, nice. Uh, this weekend is my tattoo. Yay, I was going to ask if that, I cannot wait to see it. I'm very excited. Where are you getting it? On an arm, but I haven't decided. So, um, what I'm getting is the save block from Paper Mario the Origami King which was on the Switch Kobe and I played that t together um, a lot and we played several Paper Marios together but the save block on that specific one is really pretty and it's got like a lot of colors no I want to see it um, so I, I think I'm going to get it like here on my forearm or like on the sort of the outside of my forearm I haven't decided I'm going to talk to the tattooist and see what he thinks. Yeah. Because um, you already have tattoos right. on both your forearms, correct? Correct. And I don't necessarily want it, like, on the outside, like, by do... itself, if it was part of something bigger, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you could do shoulder blade. Um, yeah. Okay. So, we'll see, but hopefully next time we record, I'll have a fresh new tattoo to show y'all. That's fun. Um... And that's really all I can think of that's going on. Cool. I mean, yeah. We don't have a lot going on. We're gearing up for SSK. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Ply Guild Zoom this weekend. And I just did a... Hung out with Jillian Marino and her Patreon Zoom, which I love mm -hmm. hanging out with people. It's super fun. 
Um, yeah, and on the Patreon topic, just thank you to the people that support us on Patreon. Yes. Um, we no longer monetize on YouTube because um, it used to be that you could choose whether or not to let YouTube put uh, an ad in the midi middle of your video. Now you can no longer choose. Now they're all the time, yeah. if you haven't noticed. So we turned that off as soon as they put that into effect because it's really jarring. Um, so, Especially when the, there's volume changes. Yeah, for sure. And I'm like, I'm a known mumbler. I try to enunciate <laughs> on this podcast because I know there's a volume difference between the two of us. But yeah, so we don't monetize there. So the people who support us on Patreon are really the people who help us pay the bills. Like yep. for hosting the podcast and, you know, the internet to upload and maintain the, the podcast and any Zoom, equipment that we have yeah. to buy. The cost of a corporate Zoom account. Like all these little things add up and we sincerely appreciate the people yep. who support us on Patreon. Whether it's like a dollar an episode or five dollars an episode, it's it's appreciated. And you do it per episode, so if yeah. we don't record, you don't have to pay. Yeah. If we're lazy, you know, we record twice in a month. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know that lazy is the word. We've just had a lot going on this year between Leslie getting COVID, yeah. um, my mom's surgeries. Like, there's just been a lot of non-crafting content life yeah. stuff that's been happening, and... You know, things go through phases, and and, yeah, and we're just in one of those times where there's just a lot going on. So we try to do it weekly, but I know we have been more Sometimes hit it, than miss. Yeah, it's the way it goes, or miss than hit, I should say. <laughs> um, it real life. Sucks sometimes. It does. I don't like being an adult. <laughs> it really is lame to to wake up and have to realize you have to go to work like everybody oh. else. <laughs> the worst but all right well you guys have an awesome week and we will talk to you again next week bye y'all